Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Journalism and New Media Studies, Sojourns, Bachelor Programs, Bachelor of Arts, Journalism and Digital Media, Bajzam, BNM 0 to 1 Introduction to Journalism and Digital Media, Block 1 Introduction to Media and Communication, Unit 1 Communication Processes, 1.0 Introduction, What Exactly is Communication? The word is derived from the Latin word communis, which means to make common. At the simplest level, communication involves understanding what someone conveys and means and, in turn, making someone else understand what you mean. However, for communication to occur, it is important for some basic understanding to exist, which is possible only when the two people feel and think about that subject on common lines. The more common between two people, the better their communication gets. The person who sends a message or communicates is called the sender source and the one who receives it is called the receiver. A well-known media expert, Dennis McQuayle, in his book Mass, Communication Theory, defined communication as the process that increases commonality but also requires elements of commonality to occur at all. Many social scientists have attempted to define communication from different perspectives. One of the oldest and most widely quoted ones is from a Western political scientist. Harold Laswell, 1948, who posed some questions with the answers to which would have communication defined. He described it as, who says what in which channel to whom with what effect. Channel here stands for the medium of communication, which may be language, book or even a mass medium like radio, television or newspaper. The effect is the common understanding that communication aims at the building. According to John C. Merrill and Ralph L. Lowenstein, communication is a meeting of minds, a bringing about of a common set of symbols in the minds of participants, in short, an understanding. 1.1 Learning Outcomes After reading this unit, you will be able to times analyze communication. Its process and need times describe forms of communication and effective communication times development of communications media times differentiate between conventional and new media and times interpret how the media plays a role in the social construction of reality. One point need for communication Communication is as important a need for all living beings as food and shelter. All living beings invariably communicate within their community, be it the birds' evening call to return to their homes, barking dogs in protest, when a non-member enters their territory or the dance of the honeybees to convey to other members where nectar can be found. For human beings, too, this is a natural individual and social need. As man is a social animal. No, normal human being can exist in isolation, irrespective of age, gender and interests. 1.2.1 Communication Process Communication creates meaning shared between the participants as a continuous, cyclic process. The sender shares knowledge or information based on his experiences with the receiver. What the sender understands as an Outcome of those experiences is what he further conveys to the receiver. So, one common functional definition for communication can be a cyclic process of sharing of experiences between two or more participants. This brings us to the process of communication. The process of communication involves four basic elements, the sender, S, the message, M, the channel, C, and the receiver, R what is also called the SMCR, model of communication. The representation below, fig.1.1, indicates how communication takes place in a cyclic process, encoding, interpretation, decoding, sender, channel, language mass, media gestures, communication process, feedback, feedback, decoding, interpretation, encoding, receiver the sender initiates communication by sending a message, and the receiver or the audiences are the ones who receives it. The message is the actual content that the sender desires to convey, and the channel is the medium of conveying that message. Channel 
the medium of conveying the message can be mass media. Language, gestures, body language, signs and symbols. When the sender sends a message through some channel to the receiver, the receiver decodes that message in his brain, makes meaning out of it, interpreting, and then encodes the response of that message in his mind and conveys it back to the sender. This process of conveying back is called feedback, an important component in communication. Feedback indicates whether what has been understood is what the source sender meant or is different from the source's understanding. While receiving the feedback, the sender becomes the receiver and the receiver becomes the sender. One point to point to effective communication, communication is considered effective if it produces the desired results. For example, if a political leader, through his speech, can motivate the electorate to cast their votes for him, his communication may be termed effective. A child tends to take his parents' or teachers' warnings or instructions seriously, but will not listen to a stranger. His parents' communication with him is effective, but the latter is not. Both examples clearly show that the relationship between the source and the receiver communicates. This factor decides how the meaning would be interpreted at the receiver's end. The perception of the source by the receiver or the trust factor in their relationship decides how positively the receiver would respond to the source's message. Any communication is called effective if the meaning of the message interpreted by the receiver is the same as that desired by the sender. The effectiveness of the message would be clear from whether or to what extent any desired behavioral change is brought about in the receiver. This is also termed feedback, which can be in words and or actions. The response that a communication message emanates from the receiver is termed feedback. Feedback may be positive, negative or neutral. When an employee continues to come late to the office despite repeated reminders, it is negative feedback, as the communication is not getting the desired response from the employee when a student makes all efforts to meet the assignment deadlines of A. Teacher, it is positive feedback as it results from the high regard the student may have towards the teacher. Hence, the teacher's communication is termed effective. When a voter does not exercise his right to vote, let alone vote in favor of or against a political leader, it is called neutral feedback, as the communication did not affect him. 1.2.3 Barriers to Communication There are certain communication barriers which may hinder its effectiveness. These may be of varied types, times communicating to the receiver at a wrong inconvenient time, times for some reason, the message communicated is distorted, i.e., a change in the message's meaning due to noise. Noise is termed as the change. Introduced in the message so that its meaning does not remain what was intended by the source, time's information overload is yet another barrier as every individual has a limited attention span during which he she is receptive to communication, messages, times besides technical barriers, there are also language and psychological barriers to communication. Language barriers may be of two kinds, times vocabulary, Use of difficult words that the receiver may not understand, time semantics, when the message's meaning is unclear to the audience or what the audience understands is different from what the source meant, dot, time psychological barriers may include these factors, time's noise, sometimes. When the student in the class thinks of an India-Pakistan cricket match that will take place that evening, what the teacher says may be noisy. Alternatively, any disturbance in the frequency of a radio channel can create a disturbance and the audience may be unable to hear what is being broadcast, times perception set differences. Over a period of time, individuals build a certain tendency to perceive a message in a certain way. For example, some people believe what advertisements claim about a certain product, as their experiences with it may be positive. Alternatively, others may not believe such messages, as their experiences with the same product, service may not be satisfactory. This tendency is called the perception set. 
due to differences in experiences, value systems, beliefs and social realities of individuals, differences in perception set will always exist, so, a message may not have the same effect on all individuals, times lack of trust and jealousy may also be why a message may not have the desired effect on the audience, times information filtering, the receivers tend to accept only those messages that they find interesting or reinforce the notions and beliefs they already have. They filter such information and leave out the rest, becoming another psychological barrier. 1.3 Types of Communication Knowing what communication is, what makes it effective and what reduces its effective capacity. It is also important to know the different forms in which this process is carried out. Though we are exposed to each of these forms daily, we may have never paid any attention to them. Communication Scholars agree that there are four basic forms of communication. Interpersonal communication This is a kind of communication in which there is only one participant, the sender and the receiver. This is also known as auto-communication or introspection. Talking to oneself is a good example of this interpersonal communication. This communication occurs between two participants and the exchange may be formal or informal. It is the ideal kind of communication as the sender can get feedback instantly. As it is one to one communication, the sender can also study the receiver's body language, gestures, postures, facial expressions, etc., which gives an ample idea of what the receiver means and whether what is said is also what is meant. Influencing and persuading the other person is also easy, and there is a greater scope of appealing to the receiver emotionally by means of motivating, encouraging, and coordinating. It is also known as dyadic. Communication, group communication, this is an extension of interpersonal communication, and the exchange involves more than two people, where the participants get a chance to express themselves on subjects of common interests. This communication serves many goals like collective decision making, self expression, and relaxation, and is effective as it allows interaction directly with the receivers. One common aspect of such Communication is the emergence of a leader coordinating the communication within the group. Mass communication. This is communication that takes place with the help of a mechanical device that simultaneously multiplies messages and takes them to a large faceless audience. Mass media like newspapers, radio, television, and the internet are needed for this communication. The source and the receiver are physically separated in time and space. The audience is anonymous and heterogeneous. The feedback in mass communication is slow, weak, and delayed. Different forms of communication mentioned above are effective in different communication contexts. The widest reaches of mass communication, but the most effective is interpersonal communication. For example, to make the general public aware of a new product, advertisements, and publicity are the best ways for which the use of mass media is mandatory. On the other hand, for a desired change in an individual's behavior, like quitting smoking, it is more fruitful to counsel him personally, I interpersonal communication would be more effective. 1.4 Growth of Communication and Media When there was less communication and communication channels in society. People lived based on equality as there was no hierarchy among people. Later, those who controlled the communication channels emerged stronger, while the others were weak. With changing times and technology, the communications media developed as people realized the subtle but strong effect media could have in influencing public opinion. In earlier societies, the number of women a man had determined his status in society. Later, the number of cattle one owned indicated one's status. Even later, it was how much land one had that determined it, and then it was the riches that counted most. These stages of societal development based on economic development are identified as times pre-agricultural societies, small communities existed with mostly 
spoken words as their means of communication and consisted of hunters and food gatherers, times agricultural societies, people practiced agriculture to earn their living, writing came into being, and these were more developed societies with a complex social structure. But a huge chunk of the population remained illiterate, times industrial societies, this was the machine age and was marked by the publication of Gutenberg's Bible as early as 1455. This drastically improved the speed of book printing that was earlier copied by hand, using movable metal type. Mass production became the mantra, and industrial production was centered in cities, which led to a huge migration of people from rural to urban areas. Jobs in these industries became more important than farming, information society, the second half of the 1900s saw the emergence of information societies, primarily in the United States. But from the second half of the century till its end, most economies of the world had drifted towards it, because of which media became much more important than before. One important invention of the time was the computer, which became the main tool for handling information, its creation, processing and distribution. Today, information is power. Those with better information sources are more resourceful and stronger in society, they are opinion leaders and are listened to, while others do not wield such control. The information society has also seen different conventional media forms merging into one, thus becoming cheaper, more accessible and faster. The conventional media forms comprising different communication technologies merged into a computer-readable digital form. The earlier technologies were analogous or linear in nature, while digital technologies could be stored and used in any format and were easy to use. This process of merging technologies to give a better output of more than one conventional media technology is called convergence. For example, a mobile phone serves the purpose of a phone and a computer as emails can be accessed on it and the internet can be browsed. Also, a computer acts as a television as channels can be accessed on it. Television and computers, on the other hand, have made DVD players outdated. All these examples show how the output of more than one technology can be had from a more compact and cheaper technology. Also, these technologies are interactive, making feedback an inclusive communication process. It enables the improvement of messages. This fast exchange of information through cyber networks has led to the coining of the term information superhighway, irrespective of the communication objective, which may be social, networking, e-commerce, e-governance or professional communication. Before we delve further into this discussion of 21st century technology, let us view the characteristic features of conventional media that have dominated the communication media scene for a long time and the new media that has lately emerged, newspapers, the ancestors of newspapers were called corantos, which were news sheets published as long back as the 1620s in England and Holland with irregular periodicity. Later. Around the 1640s Dionals appeared in England that were dailies publishing reports on domestic events. They were the actual ancestors of the newspapers we see today. We have two formats in which newspapers appear, broadsheets, for example, the Indian Express, the Times of India, and tabloids, for example, Mail Today and Mint. Broadsheets are the morningers that carry hard news and opinions based on them, while most tabloids are eveningers or evening papers that are more of news magazines or feature newspapers. While broadsheets come up with fresh news, tabloids carry features and detailed stories based on them. Why? The advantage of newspapers is that they sell cheap, they can reach out only to the literate section of the population. Over the last six to seven years, a lot of experimentation has been done in Indian newspapers, from reducing their sizes to make them portable to dividing them into as many sections as can be covered to cater to the maximum number of readers. 
innovations are also brought out to market them as a product and as a viewpoint. While their circulation is dying out in the West, they are soaring high in India. Magazines, the earliest magazine was published in England in the 1730s, though they primarily focused on politics. They were then called miscellanies as they carried various contents. In the later part of the 1800s magazines, made efforts to popularize magazine reading. There was widespread growth due to increased literacy and reduced costs to ensure greater sales and because, in that era of industrialization, more and more businesses wanted a platform to put forth their advertisements and publicity messages. Today, magazines are generally classified into general interest and special interest. Magazines the first category is those magazines that cover several subjects to cater to wider masses, for example, India Today, Outlook, and the second category is the one that caters to a niche audience, for example, Better, Photography, National Geographic and Business World. Most newspaper groups own the magazines that one generally sees on the newsstands. The Reason is that the newspaper's publishing capacity increases with that flow. Newspaper groups come up with sister concerns in the form of magazines that have a longer shelf life and hence make advertisement publication a costlier affair. Radio Radio was first invented by an Italian named Marconi in the 1890s. He is called the father of radio. Broadcasting or transmitting voices and Music to a geographically separated large audience had begun through the telephone, invented by Alexander Graham Bell before the advent of radio, that is when radio became a mass medium. The first license for transmitting a broadcast in India was given in February 1922, while the AIR was formed in June 1936. The most important time in the history of radio was during the Second World War when this medium of addressing the masses became immensely significant. This was because the Nazis in Germany used it for propaganda and by playing German music which would give an impression that they had conquered the areas where the music was played. They could damage the morale of their rival forces. FM broadcasts started in Chennai, then Madras in 1977 and Jalandhar, Punjab in 1992. Private players came into the picture only in 1993. Radio later developed into a youth medium. Today, radio's approach is more local, from updating traffic to playing popular music. The advantage of this medium is that it is mobile, does not require reading ability and can be enjoyed without demanding sole attention on the medium itself, unlike television. These days, the emergence of Community radio is seen in large numbers, which makes more specialized programs for a niche audience. Television Television first started developing in the 1920s and 1930s. After the printing press, television is considered to be the most important communication invention. By the late 1940s and early 1950s, television had become a part of life in most of the developed countries. In India, television was introduced to bring about development in the year 1959. By 1970, the content on TV included news, information and entertainment programs, including Trishi Darshan, which began in January 1967 for farmers in 80 villages. Commercials were first telecast in January 1976. Today, the number of television channels in India outnumbers the time one can afford to watch them even once a week. The race for TRPs, television rating points, which decide the popularity of a TV show or a channel, is of prime importance as it directly affects the channel's ad revenue. In fact, for that very reason, channels do not mind compromising on work ethics or building an agenda for public discussion for their vested interests. 24 hour news channels have become a reality with no sanctity of what should be called news. Television creates a reality that may sometimes not be real. For example, the portrayal of 
superwoman in Indian media one who can single-handedly carry out all personal, professional and social tasks without faltering at any time is the ideal modern Indian woman. Cinema, the earliest cinema portrayed real event shots in motion without any sound, storyline or plot. They were just black and white, larger than life says silent scenes that first appeared as early as 1896. The first Indian movie is said to be Raja Harishchandra, a silent movie made in 1913 by one of the pioneers of Indian cinema, Dada Sahib Falke. The first talkie, a film that could talk in India was Alam Ara, made in 1931. In the years to come, regional cinema also flourished. Contemporary films have not just remained a form of art for its lovers to delight in, they have also started taking up contemporary issues, making for entertainment and food for thought. The relationship of cinema with society is very complex. It has been found to have an effect on the psychology of the audience. In contrast, the degree of audience acceptability has varied from one film to another, looking at their experimental nature and low investments over the past four to five years. While romance, comedy and depiction of real-life situations click with the audience, most of the time, horror films are much less accepted. The Central Board of Film Certification in India looks into what can go to the larger masses and what may disturb their sensibilities following a certain code of ethics, they either allow or censor objectionable scenes in a film. Also, based on whether they can affect the minds of the more impressionable section of society, the films are certified as you or universal, meant for all age groups, and a or adult, meant for people only above 18. Dot, folk media. This medium has been alive in our society since ancient times and has been used for conveying political, social and moral messages. The advantage of such a medium is that it is personalized, members of the same community perform it, and is used where the audience fully accepts it, which makes the communication effective. It relates to all age groups of people and is inexpensive. Mainly confined to rural India, this is special in every part of the country. For example, Tamasha and Pavla in Maharashtra, Yakshagana in Karnataka, Jatra in Bengal, Bhavai in Gujarat and Nautanki. Ramlila and Raslila in the northern states of India. Sometimes, their messages may be satirical or sharp, but they are efficient communication tools. Many NGOs also use these forms, considering how powerful a medium it is. Government bodies in rural areas also use folk media to pass on health, agriculture, or any other development issue-related messages that are smartly imbibed in traditional folk songs, dances, and mythological stories. That is what makes it a powerful tool for development communication. So far, we discussed conventional media. The new media is the internet. Let's see how it has revolutionized the world. Internet, the first calculator, the Bacchus, was the predecessor of the computer, which was first used by Egyptians in 460 BC. Some scholars also mention the Chinese Abacus. Charles Babbage, an Englishman, is called the father of computers who first produced designs for a computer that could make calculations based on stored memory. The Internet as we know it today has fast developed to replace and merge most communication devices and technologies. Today, they are used in educational institutions, commercial and business organizations, government departments, international organizations and the defense sector. But these are the major sectors. It has made its inroads even into most individuals' lives and given them an internet identity. Virtual reality has almost become literal with the kind of involvement it has in our day-to-day -day lives. It has the most evident advantages, but also perils that stand out. While social networking has helped build interpersonal connections in far and distant lands for personal and professional reasons without spending as much as a penny, 
it has also led to antisocial and aggressive behavior on the net. For example, writing hate, mail about personalities, organizations and religions, defaming and harassing people by posting morphed photographs or posting nasty things by hacking their accounts and different kinds of cyber crimes like hacking bank accounts and even child molesters contacting children through chat rooms. Whatever, it's dangers. The internet has taken the world by storm and there is no stopping it. Moreover, as referred to earlier, each conventional medium has computer-related technology to operate it. As all TV and radio have turned to digital, analogous, printing has become cheaper with the aid of computers in the form of desktop printing. Newspapers and magazines use computers for designing and editing, e-books and e-musics are available at the click of a mouse, and films and videos use this technology, too. So far, we have understood what mass communication means, how mass media developed, and the special features and characteristics of different media forms, both conventional and new media. Now, let us analyze the conventional and contemporary views of mass media. 1.5 Communication Processes to make the study of the conventional and contemporary view simple, let us try to analyze communication through its characteristics and economics, conventional communication characteristics. The conventional view of mass communication considers media all-powerful. The communication was made from a single source to anonymous and heterogeneous multitudes of audiences irrespective of their tastes, interests and preferences. The audience was considered passive and would accept anything served to them by the media. Through their media empires, a few media controllers decided what should and should not go into the public domain or what should be the public agenda. They were instrumental in creating the tastes and opinions of the audiences. So, they acted as gatekeepers in the media and helped set the media's agenda. These functions are called the gatekeeping and agenda setting functions of media, respectively. While the messages were undifferentiated, I same for all audiences alike, the motive was to create some kind of consensus among all by creating similar tastes and viewpoints. The feedback to such communication was negligible and was not given much importance. Conventional media economics, alongside these characteristics, media economics also towed a different line. You all know that the media get their revenues from advertising. The larger the circulation of newspapers and the greater the television rating points, TRPs, for television channels, the more profitable the business will be. In such a conventional system, media required as many audiences as they could possibly get to generate revenue through advertising. The audience was not systematically targeted as it was not differentiated according to market needs. 1.6 Mass Communication The contemporary view, contemporary communication, convergence has been phenomenal in defining the contemporary view of mass communication as we know it today. Convergence is a phenomenon of merging technologies and producing more than one different kind of output while also making its use simpler. Convergence, along with further technological innovations, made the media market consumer oriented. With the onset of 24 hour news channels and numerous entertainment channels, more magazines and newspapers, and more FM channels on the radio. There was a huge variety of content for the consumer to pick and choose from. There was something for all audience, segments, whether homemakers, children, adults or people looking for serious news and opinions. This gave the media consumers the liberty to form their own opinions and created competition among various media platforms, intermedia competition like that between print and electronic media, as well. As the media groups owning similar media segments, intramedia competition, like between different newspapers, dot, meanwhile, control shifted into the hands of the consumer, who became spoiled for choice and wielded control by simply zapping channels or choosing to change the newspaper that came to his house. While technology became an easy-to-use product, 
consumers also found themselves becoming the producers of content. For example, they could now create their websites or blogs, create their movies and upload them for everyone to see. Citizen journalism is another case in point. As they were the producers and consumers of media communication, they came to be called prosumers. Media economics, there was a greater focus on media marketing, innovations, with media enticing the audience with various ways to opt for their product. A price war ensued between media organizations, and every media tried to slash their prices as much as possible while aiming to build on their circulation TRPs. Every medium started marketing itself like any other usable commodity, say, soap or shampoos. Media also collaborate with products or services other than media to sell themselves. Most organizations wanted to own more media platforms, for example, a newspaper owned a radio, TV event management, and news agency. This benefited in creating monopolies in their markets and helped create a self-sufficient support system for all their media platforms. But what was more, they were better positioned to negotiate with their advertisers with better offers and packages. Today's media companies are ready to pirouette as per audience demands and encourage audience participation and feedback while aiming for profit. Maximization 1.7 Summary Media never promised to work for philanthropy, though they were created to be socially responsible. It remained on us, the audience, to stay aware of the kind of content it offered and select reject it collectively. Initially, the country statesmen wanted to see the media strong on national and regional levels as their planned objectives differed. But once this entity became powerful. It diverted its focus to suit its needs. Now, society looks for someone with whom the buck would rest. But, the truth is that nobody can will solely shoulder the responsibility. Only the audience denouncing malpractices of the media and introducing a synthetic value system in Indian society can change what is being served to the audience in the name of news, entertainment, and role models. Change always takes longer and is always challenging. The future holds hope. What remains to be seen is whether or not our media with the people would be able to meet the challenge. Thank you. Subscribe to our channel for more updates and we will see you with the next chapter.